Hey everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can integrate the advanced session plugin in the newest version for Steam Multiplayer. Yeah, let's go. So start your Unreal Engine. I'm running 4.22.2 and I'm going to use the third person template as always. After you created your project, let's work on the setup for the advanced session plugin. For this, we go into our web browser. I'm going to use Firefox, go to Google, and let's search for advanced session plugin. There, the first link is from the Unreal Engine forum. And here we have everything about the plugin the download link, infos about the uh, usings, and so on. So scroll down here for the download link and let's get it. Save it into your project folder. Here's my project Steam Tutorial YouTube. You can see it here. If you want to get it fast, just use here Show in Explorer and copy the link. Then go into the uh, primary, primary root folder where you can see content config and all the stuff and there you want to save it. Oops, here. Then we can open this thing up and we can say unpackage it and then inside here we want to have the advanced session. I'm gonna copy this one and we need to create here a new folder called plugins. And there we can paint the advanced session. This is almost everything. We now need to go to Google again and search for Unreal Engine Steam subsystem. Here are two docs. Let's first watch this one. This one is the, no, this is not the correct one. The correct one should be this one. Also not, let me look at it here. Ah, here we have it. So you need to have the first link where we find the default engine in E. Um, I'm gonna paste this into the uh, below the video. So back in our plugins folder we need to go a step back then into our config folder and here we have the default engine and you can paste it somewhere here in, like this. So here we have the Steam dev ID which is for testing. If you have an own Steam dev app ID you can put in your own Steam dev app ID save it and now we can go back to our project so here we need to close it now so we can reload everything go to steam tutorial youtube this is my name for my project open it up and then go to the plugins check section and scroll down for the project plugins so here we have now all the plugins that are in our plugins folder, enable both. And then you need to restart the project, I think. Um, mine is already enabled, so I don't need to restart. And now you can create some blueprints where we can access those advanced session plugin nodes. Let me show you an example on how to create a server and connect to him inside the editor with Steam. So for this, we need first a new level. So create a new level, an empty one, which will be our main menu. So save the current, create a new folder for it, like maps or something. Here you can put in main menu. Then get your world settings. Mine are not there, so I'll go to window and click on world settings. So I have here now the world settings gonna create a new game mode. It will create me a new folder blueprints and inside there I will make the main menu game mode. Next up we need a main menu so create a new folder for the UMG and inside there we want to have your, our user interface and widget blueprint call this main menu and here we're gonna use a very simple layout with two buttons and the text. And we will work on this in another video, but for our testing purpose, this is more than enough. So get 
the second one here and let's call this one here start game and this one will be join game next would be to create a pawn that can spawn um, our main menu go to blueprint class and pick the character and this one will be our main menu character open him up and go to the event graph on begin play we want to create a widget so it'll be our main menu widget and we want to have the reference here be our main menu ref and then we want to check if it's valid always check if it's valid so we never add duplicate widgets to ourselves and then from the as valid we want to have add to viewport sorry from the main menu ref we want to add to viewport then we connect the as valid to this and then we want to set input mode to the game and UI player controller is get player controller so we get the current player controller and the widget will be the main menu reference and we want don't want to hide the cursor during capture but we want to set show mouse cursor to true play tested oh it doesn't show us anything so let's look where the problem is i guess i didn't pick here the main menu so click on main menu and then again play and you have here the two buttons next up we increase the number of players so we get two windows and we will run on dedicated server so that one of the client can work as a dedicated server and you can test it inside the editor so now when you go on new editor window you will have two clients and when you don't use the run on dedicated server you have a server and a client and you can't really test it like this so you would need three windows and always have a server system but we won't work here on the server system we're working just on two clients one of them is hosting and the other one is joining so activate the run dedicated server again and then let's work on the game instance for the game instance we go to our project settings we go to maps and modes and here we're gonna go to in game instance class and add a new one which will be my game instance very simple and when we are here we can also uh, change here to starting menu main menu there we go close this up and now we can work on the default notes here I'm going to show you the two simple advanced session nodes, which will be create advanced session and find session advanced. And in the next or following video, we will work on some settings like here LAN or uh, public connections, everything else. But for this example, we only need here a new custom event which will be our create session event and we want to get the player controller we don't need to pass the player controller because a game instance is always on every client and every client has his own game instance so the get player control will always return the current client that is asking um, the server or the other client to join so that's why we can do it over the game instance best or that's why it's best to do it over the game instance sorry on success we want to open a level so we created a yeah advanced session now we want the session to join a level which will be our third person example it's easier to just copy the name from here put it in make sure to delete all and then put it in and make sure to let the level here uh, for the option on listen so other clients can join for the find session we want also add a custom event whoops sorry add custom event 
find session. And we're gonna need the get player controller again. And then we want to save our results into a variable found sessions. And we will in the next video add um, a server list. So there is everything you need to have for the server list. But this time we will just join the first server that we found. So it's a bit easier and doesn't take so much time. Search for the join session and just plug in the array element, the first one we found, and again the get player controller that is currently searching for servers will join the server. And this is everything you need to do here. Compile and save. And now we just need to activate on button click the two custom events. For this we go to the UMG, go to the main menu, click on the button from start game, create the on clicked event, and here we want to get game instance. As I told you before, this one will always be present in your game, so we can always connect to it. From this one we want just to cast to my game instance and we want to create a session. Very simple. And for the next button, this one, we want to use the same routine here, paste, and we just want to use inside here the find session. And that's it here. Let's fast check our two um, sessions. If we did everything correct, we have 100 connections here. We open the level, we listen, and we find a session we have zero results. Here we need to have something above one, so get something like 20. And then we go on success, not from this one, on success we want to join our session here. Compile and save. Now we should be ready to test. Click on play. On the first client we want to start the game and on the second client we want to join the game. After a few seconds, you can see I joined it at this game and I can see the other player on the other screen. So that's it. It's almost everything you need to know. When you now want to see if Steam works, you need just to open up Steam and then you need to run as a standalone game. This will take a little bit more time. You can see here it's opened up and you can see Steam Overlay is activated. So here we have our Steam Overlay. I'm playing Spacewar at the moment. And yeah, it's working. Before we start working on the package, we should fix some bugs here. So the first one will be going to our third person example map and choosing here the third person game mode when we inside this map. And then also if we uh, play the third person character on begin to play, we want to um, set the input mode to game only. So we can play again and not have the menu settings here. And also we want to hide the mouse cursor. So set show mouse cursor to false. If we want to have now um, the perfect package so that we also have the advanced session inside our package, we need to add a C++ class. If you don't have Visual Studio, it will tell you now that you need to install Visual Studio. And yeah, just install it. Uh, choose the version for your Unreal Engine version. For mine, it's Visual Studio 2017. And after you installed it with the Unreal Engine content, you can just open your project and just add the C++ class. And that's all. You don't need anything to know uh, in C++. You only need to create one class so that the references inside the project are added and you can package the plugin out. Without C++ code, you can't package a plugin out of the uh, project. Next up, we go to File and Package Project and one Windows 64-bit. Then create a folder called Package. 
And inside here you can just pick this folder and start packaging for Windows. And this advanced session plugin is only working on Windows, so be careful with that. Um, and then you have here your yeah, package process. If you have any problems with uh, the packaging, um, make sure you did everything like I did in the video. Um, if you packaged before you added the uh, advanced session plugin, you need to go to project settings and go to packaging and to rebuild full. So maybe uh, your project is missing something. And with a full rebuild, it will create a complete new rebuild. Then just wait for the project to package and it should be successful. There it is. We have now our project here. So let's open this up. And let's see if Steam is working here too. And as you can see, it shows here the overlay. Perfect. Start game is working also properly. Yeah, and that's it for this tutorial. In some of the next videos, we will work on a server browser and on um, damaging system over the network so we can have uh, our kills shown in our menu or something like this. Yeah, we will see where we're heading. So thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye.